Okay, welcome to Tuesday Talks at AddictedToRunning.com. Uh, tonight we're going to be having on Nathan Maxwell. He uh, is from Social Shark, um, or at Social Shark on Twitter. Um, you can find his blog at NathanMaxwell.net. Um, tonight we're going to be talking a little bit about his upcoming race schedule, uh, some of his, la his, well, his last 50K versus his first ultra, which was a 50K in November. And then uh, just kind of his upcoming race schedule, what he, how he plans on training for it. It's some of the di his different nutrition um, that he uses. Um, since our last member, uh, Love Debris, she didn't use many nu much nutrition. So, hey, hopefully get some new info tonight. So thanks for coming on, Nathan. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, so the first question is, how, um, how was your 50K in the beginning of January different than your first ultra? Um... It was uh it was kind of unique. Uh, I think uh, I definitely went into it a lot more comfortable. Uh, I was really nervous with the first one, uh, especially since I'd never even done a marathon, or still haven't, <laughs> which is kind of weird. I've done uh, in 2010. I did my first uh, half marathon. So so going into my it is uh, the one I did two weeks ago, which was the Frosty 50k. Uh, you know, considering I did a 50k and. Uh, November, it was really a little a little easier. I wasn't quite as nervous about it, um, which was good. I just kind of took it easy. Uh, just really, since I'd already done one, I knew I could do it. So I, now I just wanted to just run it and just have a good time. Um, I really didn't really make out my 2013 race schedule until after I ran my first 50K. So I was waiting to finish that one in November to kind of see, can I do this? Is my body able? And then after I did... Uh, I'll go through my race list, I guess, maybe a little bit, but it went kind of crazy, and I've got a pretty good schedule this year. But so going into it, it you know, it it was uh, it was about the same. The, one of the differences that I noticed that was uh, a little, I started uh, in my first one, I started to kind of feel some cramping feelings in in my calves and stuff around like mile twenty seven. Um, this race was different though. I felt really, really good, really strong at the beginning. But around mile 17, so a lot earlier, I uh, really started having a lot of muscle. Uh, just, I don't even know, just all down my legs. It was just kind of, it's almost like a cramping feeling, just really tight, uh, very painful. But I just kept going and pushed through, and it really hurt until I was finished. Um, it, it never really went away. I just kind of muscled through it. And so that was, that was something that was a little different and normal. Um, but I think it's something that kind of shows me, you know, no matter what and how it feels or whatever, I can push through and, and, and endure. So uh, I think it was a good learning experience for me. Um, I'm not sure what happened. You know, I could start thinking like, you know, did I train? Maybe I'd pushed it too hard the week before and I really didn't <laughs> properly taper. Uh, just the, you know, seven days or six days prior. I did a triple, a 13 mile, a 12 mile, and a 13, three days in a row, and then had like four rest days before the 50K, so that might have been a little much, so th that was also, because of that, it caused it to be my uh, highest mileage in a week ever, also, mm -hmm. anyway, but um, overall, I finished good, Hit a, he got a PR out of the race, uh, and I had just an awesome time, so... It was like really good. Got to meet meet some people that I uh, had met online, mm -hmm. and got to bump into them, which was kind of neat. And um, also met up with somebody I did at another trail race um, a few months before. So it's always neat meeting some people at the ultras. Okay, did you feel like your first one like helped you mentally on your second second one? Because that's what that's what I found when I did my second one. My first one was like, okay, I've done the distance. I know what it's like to push hard for this long. I can do it. Now let's see how much harder I can push my body. So did you get that kind of feeling? Yeah, definitely. Because um, the first one, yeah, knowing that I could do it, um, I would definitely say, you know, when I started really feeling it at mile 17, there were some times when I got up to around mile 21, 23, and, and stuff where in my head I was like, I just really, really wanted to stop, and uh, if nothing else, just walk or something. Just, just completely, just walk the rest of the race or something. And 
um, knowing that I could do it and, and having that already down and having that under my belt really helped for sure. Uh, that made a big difference mentally because um, that's where the battle is, you know. Yeah, there's some pain and stuff like that, but you can push through and just just knowing that you've got that background and and uh, that really, really helps. Awesome. And then looking forward to the rest of this year, what are some of your bigger goal races and uh, what what are you training for to get up to that? Are you using, are you using other races to train for to get up to those? Yeah, so let's see. Um, this weekend I've got another 50K. Um, I kind of just tossed this one in the month of January. I've been trying to space them out to where I only do one big race a month. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just kind of happened upon this kind of fat a race that was a free one and i got in uh got in the entry and just in time before they capped it and so me and a buddy who who runs most of them with me my buddy paul um we both got in so i'm doing a a second one this month and and then we're gonna kind of just taper down do a marathon next month which will be my first marathon (laughs) Uh, i'm really yeah i'm really (laughs) I'm uh, really excited about it. Um, it's the Myrtle Beach Marathon, and uh, I'm hoping to get a, uh, a maybe a sub four hour. Uh, you know, I'm going to push it what I can and keep it around nine minute pace if I can. So uh, I've done a couple 17 to 20 milers lately and kept it right around nine and felt really good. So I feel like it shouldn't be a problem. Um, hopefully, the adrenaline, and that's a really flat course. They say it's a really good one to PR on. So it'll be a good first one. Um, definitely doesn't scare me other than the fact that we're trying to do PR. Um, then I've got a couple more. I'm just looking at my list over here. Um, I've got a couple more 50Ks. Uh, one, a Gator Trail in March. Another one in April. Um, right now, I'm on Maze Open, so I'm thinking about making my own 50K local and just kind of running and uh, maybe inviting some crazy people who might be willing to try- run that far. Uh, got a triathlon uh, in June. That I've done for a couple of years. I'm definitely wanting to go back and do that one again. Uh, that one's exciting. And then the 50 miler. Is that the one yeah. you won? Yeah, it is. It is. So I'm hoping to go back and keep the title if I can. So it's a, it's the wilderness triathlon. So it's got a kayak, kayak bike run, and okay. so that's going to be a little more interesting. And <laughs> yeah, I think I can I can do it again. I was five minutes past uh, second place last year, so. And I think I, you know, I've got a lot more training under my belt than I did last year. Mm-hmm. Really concentrating more on the biking and kayaking last year. So um, with being stronger with the endurance, I think it'll help me uh, push a little harder. Uh, then, like I said, the 50 right after that one, probably the week prior, I'm going to have the. It's called the Boogie 50 Miler, which will be my first 50 Miler. Okay. That's uh. So I think you've done. Right? Yeah, I've done a 50 Miler. I'm scared, but I, I want to try it. I'm real excited about it, and I'm, it's going to be a night one. It's going to okay. be in June. Uh, it starts in the evening, so I'm going to probably do a couple couple nights of practice. Um, probably do something uh, close to a 50k at night, maybe practicing. I'm not really sure, kind of how we're going to taper up to it. Um, again, uh, my buddy and I, Paul, who, who run together most of the time. Usually all we do is just a, like a marathon training mm-hmm. uh, for the 50Ks. We don't really do much more than that. Um, the most of my time is like 23 uh, on some trail. We do a trail 23 run, which is real technical with a lot of hills. So it's a good practice. And that's usually our max um, prior to a race. Okay. But um, uh, in the rest of the year, I've got August. It's kind of open. I'm thinking about doing uh, doing my own 50K on a trail. Um, just to keep keep practice up, and then uh, September is a big. The, I've already signed up for the twenty four hour ultra. <laughs> so, uh, went ahead and just went out and did it, man. I, I figured, what the heck? This is going to really show me what I'm capable of. And my uh, top goal is to do a hundred. Mm-hmm. Uh, my second goal is like seventy five, and then after that, just as long as I keep going. So. You have a what's the what's the kind of the course going to be like for that twenty four hour? So it's around a, a little, around a little lake or something. It's like a mile and something, a mile and a quarter. Talk about it. it's a great, great race. Um, 
there's a bunch of little bridges uh, that it goes over, and one of them is like 300 yards or something. It goes over the part of the lake. Um, I hope it's not. Could be tough uh, after you know twelve hours of being out there. Uh, yep. Say it's pretty flat and it's just a nice um, like a hard mud course or something like that, gravel mud something like that. October uh, marathon. This will be my second marathon, official, and uh, and then back around to the same one I did last year, Derby fifty k. Okay. And that kind of for the year. I don't really have anything in December yet. I'm looking at a couple fifties uh, up in Virginia right now. So that's the I see with such a busy schedule. Um, I'm really just <laughs> kind of tapering up and tapering down you know, in between races. I really don't really have a lot of time to train. It's not like the typical, uh, like where some people do, like you know, <laughs> two three months or something like that. I'm just kind of going at it and seeing how my body handles it. Yeah. And uh, so for that 24-hour, what, what, any big plans on building up to that? or? <sighs> no. Uh, you know, I've been thinking about it. Uh, we're definitely going to have to do some, probably some doubles. Mm -hmm. uh, probably do train a couple doubles. Um, out of that, I don't know. You know, I don't, uh, I've talked to some people who've done them. Again, I'm just kind of I don't, I don't know what else to do. I'm looking for suggestions. <laughs> the heck out of me, for sure. But I, at the end of the day, you know, I'm just going to do whatever I can. And uh, I'm super excited about it. You know, definitely shit I need to do next time. Um, as hard as some of the other, uh, some other people do. Um, so, uh, you know, I usually will have one, one day that I can really stretch a long run. Uh, mm -hmm. And maybe do some ten milers during the week, you know, a few days here and there. But I usually do three or four days a week. So um, it's usually, you know, my life like three, one to like, you know, easy six to eight, nine milers. Um, but that's usually it. Um, every once in a while, if I get some extra time, I'll throw in some extras and, and run some extra mileage if I can. Okay, and then. Um so for for your nutrition, um, just for those out there, what what do you use? Uh, you feel like you got it dialed in, or still working on it, kind of thing? A little bit. Uh, I'm trying different things. Uh, I think the big thing is I'm trying to make sure I get enough protein. I don't need a lot of I don't need a lot of red meat. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not really I'm not really vegetarian or vegan. So I just uh, I just noticed that. When I eat a lot of red meat or any red meat whatsoever, it really slows my metabolism. I mainly just don't eat it because of that. I still love, um, I love my sushi, I love my fish, you know, I love tuna, you know, stuff like that. Um, I eat the occasional, I'll eat some chicken, you know, maybe some turkey and stuff here and there, but not a lot. Um, I definitely try to substitute more, uh, more of my meats for other types of protein, whether it's the nuts or um, you know, I do a lot of, you know, almond milk, you know, coconut milks and different things like that. Um, try to substitute with other things and, and get it through methods like that. I eat a lot of salads, um, tough smoothies, sometimes once a day or once every other day. And I usually do like some organic, um, hemp pro or something like that that I pick up at like Whole Foods. Okay. And that's. Yeah, uh, a couple uh, like super super green uh, drinks, uh, stuff that I mix up with like some orange juice because it's it's real brutal. I found that that wasn't good in my shakes. <laughs> uh, orange juice in the morning, sometimes late at night if I miss a morning um, to get my green, you know, like a like a spirulina and stuff like that. Just all kinds of stuff in it, and I usually mix like a couple of them together, uh, put enough orange juice in it to where it, I can get it down, and then. Uh, my smoothie very more on the proteins, and then sometimes I'll throw some uh, I'll throw some flat chia seed in there, um, hemp, you know, so like some kale, spinach leaves, and then mostly like fruits like you know bananas, blueberries, ton of blueberries. If you ever see my shakes, they're always purple looking uh, <laughs> powder. So I'll chia seeds though. Yeah, and then for like race specific, like during a race, what what are you taking? Because 
Um, for me, I'm a huge... Well, I'd take a lot of food for most people during a race, but um, I've seen from previous race reports of you, it doesn't seem like you do take that much during a race. I, uh, maybe you haven't seen a couple pictures of like, everything laid out, but it seems like I do take a lot. It seems like I have more than others. I the race thinking about it at the point where I feel myself. Mm-hmm. I, anyone else. So I usually, at least if I was a drop, um, I could completely rely on myself. If there's not a drop point, um, I'll try. And um, since I got the uh, Ultra Spire vest, that's been a big help because um, I can pack more food and then I can pack more water too. Um, I, I, the last... Uh, 50k, I, I took that and that was really nice. Um, I also have a running belt, um, and sometimes I'll run like the last 50k. I ran with both. I ran with the belt and the and the vest. Um, and so kind of half bottles will be pure coconut water, and I'm not. I'm, I I don't do any of the Gatorades. Um, I don't like any of that that stuff. It's all you know. I prefer all natural stuff. Um, I don't like anything with like acids and uh, citric. Stuff like that, just tear. You know, that, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't like it anymore. Um, so, I water and then I'll half and half. The other, the other half of my bottles will be all water. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the none, and it's been okay. Um, I only use it if I'm out of wa- uh, coconut water, okay. and it's been pretty good. Um, again, it's kind of an alternative just in case I'm out of the coconut water. Um, and then as for fuels, I'll have usually quite a few, a couple bars. Um, I just recently found a couple of new bars, and I think you've mentioned some things to me before. I'm definitely going to check out, but um, Meal and Billy Timber are the two new bars. I was doing Cliff Bars, but I didn't like how Cliff Bars weren't enough calories, mm-hmm. uh, sugar, um, and it was also they're real big and uh, not enough you know, for the amount of size they were. They were kind of hard to chew if they get cold, too. Mm-hmm. Um, the belt is really small, um, a quarter of the size and almost double or triple the calorie count and way more healthy, much more natural. And, um, and then the meal pack were also kind of like that. I felt the eye. So, um, and then for gel, um, I don't like all gels. That's why I mixed the, the bars. I'll do a little bit of, uh, I'll sometimes do a couple cliffs, um, and I like uh, the I, li- I love, love uh, body glove surge, and um, you can get them online. They have I think they're the highest uh, cap on the market for a gel. I think they're 150. So I only do like one in a race, and then like a 50k I'll do like two. So okay. that's, that's pretty noticeable. So um, I love those things. I'll usually start with one, and then if I towards the end of the race, I'll I'll try another. Okay, um, awesome. Well, uh, we're gonna look forward to seeing Nathan again um, at the end, of the, near the end of the year. Um, I have my I have my first hundred miler coming up in October as well, so <laughs> we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, Nathan will have his twenty four hour, um, so we'll see how his goes. Um, thanks for coming on. Anything else, Nathan? I think that's it, man. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Anything you'd like to share where people can find you at? Yeah, um, you know, check me. Blog uh, NathanMaxwell.net and um, and and connect on Twitter. That's where I am most of the time at Social Shark. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on again. Um, look forward to next Tuesday talk, everyone. Um, until then, uh, we will be seeing you guys later.